goodness me, this is unfortunate today. The religious implications alone. Like, Jesus. A nasty business coming up. The car industry, like, they just can't play nicely together. In breaking news, Hyundai has apparently just, uh... Hmm, just, uh... Oh, man. Like, I'm struggling for a, a delicate way to put this. Like, metaphor is probably the only way to go. <clears throat> news just in. Hyundai has apparently jammed one into Electric Jesus in California. And I really don't think it was consensual. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Website for that, obviously. Oh, you can just click the card that's up there now, dude. NORAD confirmed last night that an intercontinental ballistic egg from South Korea has impacted the Tesla semi-production facility deep in the Nevada Gigafactory. Direct hit! Right on the face. The Broken Arrow team has obviously been deployed with a classified number of paper towels. The big ones that you use at orgies, like if, if you know what's good for you. In other words, a proper car maker with proven technology has pulled off something of a daring, overtaking manoeuvre. It's going to happen more and more, dude. Like, in this case, 30 Hyundai Exient hydrogen fuel cell class 8 trucks have daringly yanked the Tesla Semi's pants right down in an entirely disrespectful public display. Like, disgraceful conduct, dudes. Electric Jesus, techno king of battery-powered Scientology. Unavailable for comment, obviously. Probably having a friggin' tantrum again, the way only a billionaire baby can when things don't go his way. Unlike the Tesla Semi, batteries not included, at least not any time soon, Hyundai's Exient fuel cell truck actually exists today in production form. So that's a salient point of difference. And so far, 46 Exient fuel cell trucks the first wave of 1,600 to be deployed in Europe by 2025 have been delivered to Switzerland. And that was last year. They've already racked up more than 1 million clean air kilometres collectively actually in service in Europe doing their heavy hauling thing. And that's direct from the Book of Revelation in the Gigafactory Bible. And now, America! Audaciously, Hyundai will deploy 30 of the damn things with double the range of the ones already rolling in Europe right on electric Scientology's front friggin' doorstep. Like the term insensitive doesn't cut it. It's aggravated heresy at the absolute minimum. Especially considering EJ's gospel on hydrogen. Like Techno King has been quite clear that he thinks hydrogen for transportation is anything but a gas, gas, gas. He's called hydrogen, quote, mind-bogglingly stupid, as well as a, quote, load of rubbish, and says of hydrogen that, quote, success is simply not possible but the California Air Resources Board and the California Energy Commission disagree, apparently, and so does the EU. The Yanks have kicked off the pilot program with a $22 million injection, and that's in greenbacks, too, which is, what, like, about a billion Southeast Asian micro-pesos? Near enough. So... Mercy's sakes alive! Looks like we got us, convoy. 30 of the exeunt 6x4 prime movers will roll out in SoCal in the dark of the moon on or before the 6th of June, 2023. In Hyundai's run and gas, heading for Musk on I-10, about a mile out of Sparky Town. That says 
Pig pen, this here's the Hydro Dark, and it's time to put that battery powered shitbox down. Like, they might not be the actual words, but I can feel a C.W. McCall remix emerging out of all of this, kind of like a phoenix. Teg Sethi could master it, now that I think about it. Like, he's become something of a real luminary in that domain. We had a long chat about that and other stuff the other night. Now, if you're a Tesla fanboy about to pop, thumping your self-righteous keyboard... Like, dude, I know this is a touchy subject, but just whew, breathe deeply, out with the bad air. These are just facts. And you lot typically don't seem to be that concerned about those, I note. It's in the terms and conditions when you sign up to the mailing list. <laughs> this is just what happens when a real car maker starts to compete, right? Electric Jesus has had ample time too, in my view, at least five years, that's pretty clear. He announced the semi five years ago in the 2016 Tesla Sermon on the Mount. Big hoopla about it again in 2018, and then in June of 2019, a firm commitment to begin production by the end of 2020. And that worked out so well. Consistency, absolutely key here. If you're incompetent all of the time, right? Nobody's going to mind, asks ScoMo. And just yesterday, Tesla confirmed, and this was reported in Electric, that the semi-rollout has been delayed again, inconveniently, this time until 2022. I note those crazy Chinese Swedes at Volvo and the three-pronged suppository in Stuttgart they're also on the cusp of deploying their own disrespectfully existent electric trucks too, inconveniently. But the Tesla Semi, it's kind of like fusion power, isn't it? Fusion power has been so ephemerally close, just five to ten years off. And it's been that way for the entire time that I have been alive. So, roughly since the Jurassic. Meanwhile... In Australia, with the, uh, with the, uh, coal-humping, bushfire, vaccine-mismanaging, climate-denying dude mining the shop. Don't get me started. Hydrogen fuel cell transportation remains largely a fantasy concept. And this is how the cake of useless nation gets baked. Personal opinion. He's like Elon Musk, minus the charisma and the cash. Like, just an empty suit. Here in our great nation, girt by sea, Casa de Merd, Hyundai has one lone hydrogen refueler in leafy Macquarie Park in the Knee of Sid. Toyota has one just... 901 kilometres away in Altona, deep in Danistan. You can't fuel up at Hyundai and drive to Altona on hydrogen because... Banjo, dude. As for clear and unequivocal governmental direction on clean alternative energy infrastructure, paving the way for a better world for our kids, just like Tony Stark's dad did back in the day, Using the US and Europe as a template. Deafening silence from Scotty from marketing. And his useless private school asshole coalition cronies. Well done, Australia. Consistency, just like Tesla. <laughs> yet agree. I just spent four days driving a hydrogen-powered Nexo, which is kind of like a pumped-up I-30, only with a fuel cell. It was great and really interesting, too. So let me know in the comments if you would like me to do a full review. It was kind of like driving an EV, only you can fill it up in five minutes if you can find a refueler. Pro tip in Australia. You can't. Reading the specs on this Exeunt truck from Europe, it makes 350 kilowatts. 
being 190 kilowatts using two 95 kilowatt fuel cell stacks and 160 kilowatts from 73-ish kilowatt hours in its onboard batteries. Fuel cells make electricity, right? And they need a battery for sort of intermediate storage and regenerative braking, like a bit of extra urge briefly. Getting going, powering uphill, things of that nature. It's how they roll. The Exeunt cab chassis weighs under 10 tonnes too, so the payload as a rigid truck is about 9 tonnes, and as an articulated truck, like a semi-trailer, it'll carry about 26 tonnes, like 36 tonnes is the GCM in articulated configuration. I'll put a link to the specs in the description if I don't get, you know, dementia cutting this report. So, if it's not there, you'll know exactly what happened. In America, the Exeunt will run hydrogen fuel tanks at 700 bar, like 700 atmospheres, basically, about 10,000 psi, whereas in Europe it runs 350 bar, which is like half as much fuel. So this is a major difference, right, between those two markets, which means the range in Europe is about 400 k's, whereas the range in America will be about 800. That's about 500 miles. And of course, if I was your Prime Minister, and I am actively campaigning, like Ming Moles first, that's how you win. If you get them over the line, the rest of the electorate just falls into place. And I do find them quite accommodating, provided you approach them in the right way, like with cash. If I were in charge, I would phase out all diesel garbage trucks henceforth and other short-haul public vehicles of that nature, and I would force all local councils to take out the trash using hydrogen. Yes! Might as well market the tech to every household at the same time as deploying it. Am I right? Your average garbo truck is the shittest application ever for a diesel engine, right? Stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. Repeat endlessly for every shift, always in first gear. Like, this is perfect for a fuel cell, however. And it would be quieter, not to mention no tailpipe toxicity. And once I'd done that, I'd just have to incentivize electrolyzers for water and filling stations to get the infrastructure to critical mass. That's not too hard. And then the free market could just pick it up and run with it. But government first, free market second. How friggin' hard is this? This is one small way that together we could make Australia less shit with available technology, like, dude, no innovation required. We just need political will, a bit of momentum. We might have to spray Parliament House with dipshit away or the manos pest, probably both. Like, I'd take advice on that. After fully funding the CSIRO and getting more technically qualified people into politics, like physicists and chemists and engineers, people who make society work, be a big ask. And I think I speak for us all when I say at this point, making the nation incrementally less shit, it's the loftiest ideal to which we could all collectively aspire without all moving to Fantasy Island. I'd rather move to Poontang Island anyway, like I'm just more in tune with the culture there. It calls to me deeply every night from across the sea. I could get that friggin' hydrogen garbo thing up and running, like kickstarting the infrastructure in the first week in office. Like, dude, dead easy. Without once putting on pants. <laughs>